All right, guys, last one on the old toxicology here. I know it seems like forever, but this is it. The last one. Yay. And then we're going to pick back up on our marine animal stings, and we'll talk about a little bit about substance abuse. Uh, marine animal inject uh, toxin injections. Again, these are your stings of a jellyfish, corals. Uh, uh, sea urchin stingrays can do these guys. They produce a lot of pain uh, out of the sight of those injuries compared to how much is actually damaged. Uh, again, the poisonous toxics is usually unstable, and they're very heat sensitive. Heat will relieve the pain. So, when you get a jellyfish sting, the using of salt water helps. But if it's warm salt water, it's probably going to work better. And yes, it's not the ammonia in the urine. That, so, when people pee on a jellyfish sting, and yes, I'm going to be honest, it's on my bucket list of, of things that you would want to do in your EMS career, maybe possibly. However, in all joking aside, it's probably the warm salt water coming from your urine that's actually doing a lot of the pain relief and not act and it activates the venom. Okay, but both fresh water and salt water contains bacterial and viral pollution, and again, you can get a secondary infection as always possible from these guys. Okay, long and the short, but yes, um, the the Saturday Night Lights, the Wee Man. Uh, again, it, it, you know, if you've not watched that, we'll probably watch that in class. But again, uh, it's probably the warm salt water that's helping more than the actual um, um, the actual salt water itself that's doing it. It's the warmth that's actually doing the, the all the all the good. So again, the the how do we uh, how do we treat these again? The, the intense local pain, nausea, vomiting it can be tachycardic, and they can actually go into shock from this. So again, make sure your uh, airway apply a constricting band so that it, you can occlude the lymphatic flow on these guys. Uh, again, heat or hot water works really good here. Okay, and then inactivate or remove any stingers that you might have from that. Uh, Citrodera poisoning. We talked about this bony fish. Okay, so again. The wonderful toxin, but predator reef fish, especially like barracudas, uh, these guys have a lot of it in there. That's why you don't eat barracuda. Okay, but again, they get nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, abdominal pain, uh, uh, hot, cold temperature sensation changes, uh, and again, you'll get neurologic symptoms with this. Okay, you really, especially like your red tide events, you don't want to be eating the fish. Okay, there is no cure to this. There, the 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 toxin, by the way, is odorless, colorless, tasteless. You don't know it until you already eat it. Okay, um, and so again, the there is no cure. That's the biggest thing. It's supportive care for these guys. Now, your substance abuse, again, is a pharmacological substance for the purposes of other than the medically defined. And then, again, and, and unfortunately, this is growing, in, in especially your narcotics. Oh, man, the addiction rate there is going through the roof, okay? And then an addiction is where the abuser, abuser, they crave this, they need it, whether it's an actual physical or psychological uh, uh, need for that. Okay, uh, habitation is the, when you get acc accustomed to the use of the drug, and it usually takes more drug to create a the desired effect for abusing the drug in the first place. Okay, um, the the physiologic dependence actually is a very real thing. Okay, so yes, people can have physiological dependence upon that. All right. So, again, your tolerance here, again, it continues to use. Abusers must use the increasingly larger doses to get that same effect. And the withdrawal can also cause problems as well um, because they can, coming off of the drug, and it, it can actually lead to death in certain cases, okay? Uh, and obviously it can cause conflicts with families, co-workers, personality changes. Uh, uh, it, it is definitely a huge problem. It's a huge issue. Um, so again, uh, drug overdoses is where you poison yourself from the pharmacological substance, whether it be legal or illegal. And then imperative that the paramedic contains a non-judgmental. Um, I, I've known many of people that have been addicted to things, folks, and they didn't show up that day to become addicted to something. And unfortunately, sometimes they can't shake that addiction. It's not our judge to be judge, jury, and executioner in these cases. Okay, so again, uh, the presentation of the drug overdose it depends upon what the substance is. And again, you need to get a hold of the, if you know what the substance is or have a good suspicion of that, again, get with poison control and get with medical direction about the treatment that you're going to do. Um, 
So again, for certain substance abuse problems, again, alcohol, it might require some D50 or thiamine. Uh, again, amphetamines, usually something to, if they're usually going to have seizures, uh, again, something to calm them down, okay, barbiturate, Haldol, uh, your barbiturates, again, is uh, you want to force diuresis, uh, and you want to eliminate the barbiturate from the body, again, start, uh, again, hydrating that patient, IV therapies, benzos, again, your your antidote is flumazenil, or the other name for that is romazicon, uh, however, gang, uh, usually the they do not have this in the pre-hospital setting. Uh, again, respiratory support, I would say, is a, another big one there. Your cocaine. Uh, Valium is your friend. Versed is your friend. Okay. Benzos. All right. Uh, to treat the seizures, the beta blockers are absolutely contraindicated. You do not want to use a beta blocker here. You will kill them. Okay. Hallucinogens, usually a benzo for seizures. Uh, and again, you want to stop the hallucination. How Haloperidol can help that a little bit. Um, again, your narcotics, again, naloxone is, and again, we use that so much already. Uh, but again, and again, watch out for your withdrawal reactions with those. Um, again, drugs are used for sexual purposes. Uh, they, they stimulate the sexual experience, but, uh, again, this is your ecstasies. Uh, this guy, a lot of, um, euphoria feelings, uh, a lot of, um, uh, tachycardia and elevated blood pressure with this. Uh, also, f uh, high temperatures can also cause that. Uh, prolonged use, again, can cause uh, the uh, brain damage. Uh, your hypnol, these are the date rape drugs. Again, strong benzos, similar to diazepam. And again, uh, a resulting sedation, which allows them to be easily taken. But again, uh, again, uh, usually your... your um, you want to use a uh, probably the respiratory support with these guys is all that's going to be needed as far as uh, the benzodiazepine that your flumazenil can help a little bit. Um, your physiological again remember that alcohol it depresses the CNS and at low doses uh, it actually excites and stimulates. But as you get more again, this is where hey you know we're having fun we got a buzz and then you fall off the cliff because you drank too much, okay? Uh, and again, an alcoholism, that's where you have an abuse or dependence upon alcohol. Um, and again, remember that the alcohol is is completely absorbed in the intestinal tract. It will continue to absorb. Yeah, that's right. That's why you can go from buzz to, uh-oh, I'm over the line really quick. And the other problem is, is that once it starts to absorb, it usually likes to throw the stuff up. Uh, so again, remember, vomiting is a definite thing that's going to happen with your alcohol abuse. Okay. In cold conditions, uh, it can actually dilate the blood vessels. So a lot of people drink to stay warm. It's actually a really stupid idea. Okay. Uh, uh, they can actually try to drink methanol, which can cause visual disturbance, pain, nausea, vomiting, and your ethylene glycol ingestions has similar symptoms. This would be your, they drinking antifreeze, okay? Yeah, it's a really bad, but the problem is they added something to that, which causes prolonged seizures and coma uh, in, in, in their early stages, and it, it absolutely destroys the liver. Okay, um, again, the alcohol abuse, I'm talking about the ethylene glycol, although the alcohol destroys livers, it usually takes a little bit longer for them to do. Uh, again, uh, it, person that might have a problem, okay, they're pre they, they want to go get a drink. Uh, they're drinking early in the day. They're prone to drink and alone and, and, and secretly. Uh, periodic binges, they black out. They might have a that look like they have a green tongue or a furred tongue to it. Uh, cigarette burns on the clothing because they pass out from while they're smoking. Okay. Uh, again, they can have chronically flushed faces or palms. And then the odor of alcohol, they actually smell like alcohol even when they're not drinking. Okay. So that is one of it. They can have poor nutrition. They can have uh, enlarging of their liver, the hardening of that liver. Again, loss of sensation in the hands and feet. And then they lose a uh, cerebellar function, which is they lose balance and control with that. They can also develop pancreatitis. And we talked about that during the GI part of it. Uh, the problem with drinking is, is yes, it can send your sugar down. Uh, and again, sub it can actually do the, the patient falling. They, they're a little bit more prone to having a subdural hematomas or rib fractures fractures or extremity fractures from that and again uh, again when you got an alcoholic that's falling and now they're confused don't think that they're just again this could be a hematoma hint hint DTAC okay 
for example, DKA patients also they can they, they it's confusing. I think that there's a bit of a difference between the two odors myself. Okay, now alcohol withdrawal again usually several hours after a substance abstinence and can last up to five to seven days. And yes, it can reach the point where they actually they have seizures from it. And they end up dying from the seizures. Uh, delirium tremens. These are the guys that have a decreased level of consciousness where the patient hallucinates or misinterprets. They see things. Okay, yes, they. Um, I've I've seen patients that have seen their dead family members and you know, and they're following them. They're legit. Okay, they're they're they are like, yep, grandma's there. I'm gonna go in the other room and talk to grandma, and we're all looking and going, oh, that ain't uh, grandma's not there, but that's okay. Hey, guess what? Um, again, signs and symptoms. Again, uh, they they got tremors, uh, the nausea, vomiting, generalized weakness. Uh, they're gonna be tachycardic, and they're probably gonna be sweating from that. Their blood pressure is gonna be up. Although once they stand up, they start losing their blood pressure. Again, really irritable, hallucinating, poor sleep habits. Okay. And again, start an IV if they're having DTs. Again, get your D50 on board if their their blood sugar is low. Uh, consider a benzodiazepine. Actually, yeah, it's okay to sedate these guys if they're actually fully into with withdrawal symptoms. Okay. Again, I would use probably a low dose of that. Okay. And guys, remember you're there to help and you're here to support them. All right. Um. Again, toxicology gang is a huge topic, okay? And I'll make sure that you're in your book on this one, okay? And uh, if you follow these rules right here, recognize and identify it, what the poison is, make sure their ABCs are good, and figure out what it was and what got them to that state. That's the biggest thing that you can do as a pre-hospital provider. Um, again, there's a lot of the things that we don't carry would get them to the proper, uh, what they need. They might just need very simple supportive care at home. Poison control, again, your friend in this case, okay? And again, do what you can to reduce symptoms. To bradycardia, tachycardia, seizures, respiratory support for your arrest, uh, burn care, again, if they if they have burned something, all right? That's going to do it for this. Yay, we're finally done with toxicology. So I will see you guys on the next one.